Hello, in this video, we've got a practice problem with a, an excise tax. An excise tax is a per unit tax uh, all across the United States. Many states charge a per unit or excise tax on a pack of cigarettes. Um, where I live in Arizona, it's $2. In this particular problem, it's $125. So what that does is it increases the price that the buyers will have to pay, um, but doesn't change the price that the sellers get to keep because whatever that excise tax is, is collected by the government. Okay, So in this particular market, equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity, we're going to go, we're going to take a look where is quantity demanded, which is the amount uh, that they want to buy, equal to the amount that they want to sell. So um, whenever we've got higher quantity demanded than higher quantity supplied, we've got a shortage. And then down here, higher quantity supplied than quantity demanded, we've got a surplus. So where those values are equal is right here. So it's 240 and 240, so that would be four four dollars per pack, and the quantity would be 240 millions of cartons. This is per carton, actually, not per pack. Okay, so 125 per carton excise tax on cigarettes. So what's going to happen is we're going to look here at the price that the buyers are going to pay okay so if the buyers pay three dollars they'll want to buy 360 and then we'll put the excise tax on top of that so that would be four dollars and uh, 25 cents uh, per per carton okay so that would result in down here so that would be 210 the sellers would only want to sell 160 so you don't have an equilibrium there okay so that's not an equilibrium so we need to look at all of these combinations and see where do we get quantity quantity demanded equal to quantity supplied subject that there's a tax wedge in there um, of a dollar 25 so let's look at this one here 425 so the no we just did that one um 450 okay so 450 now let's do this one 475 so 475 if the the buyers would want to buy 150 uh, cartons and then we'll subtract that to see where the sellers will um uh, what their what their quantity supplied would be so that would be 350 here and that would be 200 so we're still now we're at a, a surplus here we're still at a surplus so let's go to 450 okay so 450 if the buyers were paying 450 that would be 180 subtract a dollar 25 from that gets us to 325 so that's 180 also so that's the answer so the buyers price PB we 450 the sellers get to keep 325 so new equilibrium price uh, paid by consumers 450 price paid received by producers 325 and the quantity is 180 million cartons of cigarettes all right. <clears throat> Explain why it makes no difference why car or whether Congress levies the tax on the consumer or the producer. Well, if in this case the tax is collected by the seller and then passed over to the government, uh, the the seller is just going to mark up the uh, the tax. Okay, so they'll mark up the, the the price on the product by the amount of the tax and they'll just treat it as if they sold the carton of cigarettes for three dollars and twenty five cents um, if the buyer had to pay the tax was, was subject to the tax the buyer would basically pretend that the cigarettes cost 325 and that would be the amount that they would want to buy and then they're going to pass on that tax per uh, carton on onto the government so it really doesn't make a difference one way or the other now um, if you're not you're not asked this question, but in case you are, the tax burden is the amount off the um, 
or it's really the amount of dead weight loss, but it's the amount off of the equilibrium price. So if equilibrium is right here, so equilibrium without the tax is $4, then the buyer is going to be subject to 50 cents of that tax. Okay, that's their tax burden. And then the seller is 75 cents. So this, this tax is actually slightly harder on the seller side of the economy. So that's what you can that's what you can do in case you're asked that question. Just look at where the equilibrium is, see how much the market has changed price-wise by the tax. And so the portion here goes to the buyer, and the portion here goes to the seller. Seller's portion is greater. Okay, they can be equal, um, but often one side of the market is affected more.